So we are uh, uh, going to be talking for the next 15 minutes or so about our topic of improved microwave circuit design flow through passive model yield and sensitivity analysis. My name is Larry Dunleavy, and my co-author here is Lars van der Klooster. So just a brief uh, outline of our talk. Uh, we'll give you an introduction to monolithics global models, uh, talk about a nominal low-pass filter design flow, uh, and that will be our baseline, uh, sort of assuming that uh, the part values that are used in an LC filter are basically their exact values. Discuss how uh, the models that we uh, are, have available can enable statistical analyses. Discuss a little bit some distribution options that you have. And then move on to, uh, by way of a case study, look at some yield and sensitivity simulations and how those can be used to center a design and for improved yield. So the global models that I talk about are uh, substrate scalable, part value scalable models uh, that allow very careful pad treatment, uh, solder pad treatment, which can really affect uh, the performance of, of uh, passive SMT components above, uh, our experience is anything above about 500 megahertz. Uh, careful treatment of the solder pads. Uh, so with these models, you can de-embed them, and in some cases, you can scale their geometry. Uh, important for today's talk is the capability of the models to allow statistical simulations so that you can put, for the nominal part value, a statistical tolerance. Uh, other features that are in many of the models include horizontal ver vertical orientation, Higher order resonant effects, of course, are also captured in all of the models. We model out to the second higher order resonance if it's present in the measurements. And uh, we use uh, accurate ESR measurements. Uh, another uh, feature is that uh, in your simulator, uh, when you're placing the model, uh, when you click on help in the parameter window, you'll pull up a model information data sheet and it'll tell you all about the model. And we'll come back to that later on because one of the pieces of information that's in there are the available part values. Oh, and by the way, of course, uh, the way they're organized is by uh, body style, like an 0402 component family from ATC, for example. We have uh, one model captures that whole family, so you can scale the part value, you can put um, tolerances on it, and so on. Okay, so for our example today, uh, we're going to use a, a low-pass filter with the following goals, uh, cutoff frequency of 2.2 gigahertz, and then specifications of less than 1 dB insertion loss to 2.1 gig, uh, an out-of-band rejection spec here, and a return loss specification here. We'll see later on that these are going to become yield goals in our tolerance analysis. Our goals for this demonstration project is to illustrate a simulation-based methodology for yield estimation improvement. And we'll also show how uh, these scalable models, when combined with AWR statistical capabilities, can provide an advantage over alternative S-parameter models, which, by the way, today are kind of the industry standard, are just to use S-parameter models for SMTs. So here is an example design flow, not necessarily the only flow that could be used, uh, but uh, this is the, uh, the flow that we're uh, providing as an example here. Uh, we start with synthesizing the filter. So in that regard, uh, we, for today, we chose a fifth order Chebyshev filter synthesis with a, a half a dB ripple, used a series inductor as the first component. And when you synthesize such a filter, there's a number of methods available to you as an RF designer. Uh, one of them that you could use if you have it available is the AWR filter synthesis wizard. Okay, so once you have your synthesized filter, that gives you an ideal design. From there, you can add uh, accurate parasitic models and transmission line effects. From, and then, because these models are scalable, you can just optimize the part value, because what's gonna happen after this step is that you're gonna lose your performance. Your ideal design, if you set it up right, is gonna, of course, match your goals, but after you put in parasitic and non-idealities in, it won't. 
but in many cases, just optimizing the part value will get your performance back. And if further, uh, when you put in available discrete values, you may find that you don't quite get back what you wanted. You can often just uh, optimize the layout a little bit, the transmission line dimensions, and get a good nominal design, right? So this nominal design is going to give you the baseline values. And assuming you can get those values, maybe you meet the spec. And maybe you proceed to, to fab and measure this. And you might do this on a prototype level. But if you're going for a manufacturing type of design or a manufacturable design, an improvement to this design flow is to add tolerances and yield analysis. Uh, another uh, maybe further improvement would be to model the transmission line effects with an EM analysis. In our work today, we're using built-in transmission line models for those, and that's often a, a more convenient approach in, if you want to use tolerances on your transmission line dimensions and substrate effects. Okay, so just to illustrate the nominal design, uh, we built this filter using tight tolerance parts, and we got a very good first pass result. And this is just what the layout looks like in, in AWR. And this, this nominal design is described in this application note 18, which is up here. OK, so the nominal design is going to be used as our starting point for statistical analysis. And this is just what the schematic looks like for the uh, simulation that was presented in the previous slide. And the nominal optimized part values are listed here. And we have three inductor values and two specific capacitor values. And from here, I'm going to hand it off to my co-author for the rest of the presentation. So, hello, my, uh, my name is Lars van der Kloster. I'm looking after modelytics in, um, in Scandinavia. And I've been working with uh, technical support, uh, design support in uh, software for quite many years. And what we found out is that many people, they use an optimization engine to find a design or to meet the design goals. And the idea here is to prove, or at least to uh, give a thought about how this can be improved. Because if you use an optimization engine and you have a certain number of unknowns and a certain number of goals, then the optimization engine might find a solution that will meet the goals, the requirements, but it's not necessarily the best because there can be many possible solutions. And to do this in a better way, we are using a yield analysis to point all our component values in the right direction. So a unique capability with modelytics models is that you can actually use tolerances. And when I say unique, then I'm of course not uh, comparing with ideal components because you can use a yield analysis on these. I'm comparing them with S-parameter files. And S-parameter files, uh, sometimes they can be optimized. Uh, sometimes you can make them be optimized. It's quite a lot of work, but it is possible. But quite often it is not possible at all. And yield is definitely not possible. So. So in this case, um, we use a tolerance of 5%. Uh, with a normal Gaussian distribution, we start a little bit simple. And you can basically in the graph see the bars, and the bars are the yield goals. So basically it means that if the trace crosses this bar, then it means it's a fill. The filter isn't good enough. And you can see that with the given component values and 5% normal distribution in the tolerance, we get only a yield of 54%. So even though a prototype or the filter in the design software was good enough, if you have to throw away 50% of your filters, it's uh, not really a good design. So to get a little bit closer to reality, we are actually not continuing with this normal distribution. We use a distribution that is more realistic. And in fact, that's a normal distribution where we clip away or we cut away the middle, the high tolerance parts. So basically, we did the same yield analysis and let it run for 1,000 cycles, because otherwise it's not statistical stable, of course. And we found out that the yield goes down to 45%, so 9% less yield, due to the fact that we are using a more realistic distribution. And of course, you can also choose the opposite. So instead of using components with 5% Gaussian spread, you use 2% Gaussian spread, but then you use the components in the high tolerance region, the more expensive components. And obviously, that will give you a higher yield. What we did to experiment with this, we basically used a different kind of uh, spreading algorithms for the capacitances and for the inductances. And it gives us a feeling on what is important and what is less important. So if we use normal tolerance, which was basically where the middle was uh, removed, 
then we get about 50%. Uh, while the capacitances have this spread, the more expensive spread, you can combine the more expensive spread, the 2% spread for all components, and your yield gets as high as 85%. And then you say, okay, 85% might be acceptable, but it is quite expensive, so that's not ideal either. So when you do a yield analysis in, uh, in Microwave Office, you can set it to a certain number of iterations, and basically, after that, you can do a sensitivity analysis. There are quite many other ways to represent the data, but uh, this is the one we are using now. And basically how to read this graph is that on the x-axis you can see the offset from the component uh, nominal value. So if it's component at 4.47 uh, uh, nano Henry, then it's uh, in this case 5% uh, up and down on the x-axis. The height of the bar is showing how the yield was for that specific value. So if the bar is high, that's good. If the bar is low, it's bad. And there's also a number on top of it, and that's basically just uh, to tell you how many times this occurred. And then you can make adjustment if it's statistically uh, stable enough or not. So a very important uh, thing that you can learn about your circuit by looking at these graphs is what will happen if a component doesn't have the nominal value. And in this case, for the L1, we can actually see that the design is centered. If the component value will be too high or too low, well, it actually matters a little bit, but it's not a dramatical difference. However, on the L2, it's very poorly centered. The component values on the left, they show a much better yield. So what can we draw for a con conclusion from this? Well, if we take the component value for L2 a little bit lower than what we currently use, then the yield is probably going to be higher. Please also note that the bars in the middle they are at zero, and that's due to the fact that we use this clipping in the distribution. So that doesn't really mean that the yield is zero there. That's just because there are no measurements in that region since the components don't cover that region. And in this case, we found out by yield analysis then that the L2 had a much better uh, yield if we made the value a little bit lower. So what you can do then is you right-click on the component in the schematic editor, ask for the data sheet from Modelytics, and there you can see a table where all the available component values are. So you don't have to search in data sheet. And in this case, we picked a, a value that is a little bit lower then. And we can see that the yield immediately increases to 69%. So as I said in the beginning, the optimization engine, they can find a solution, but that doesn't mean it's the best solution and it doesn't say much about the yield. Now we have a solution with 69%. And we continue, we use different kind of spreads. Basically, we are uh, shifting between the choice of the 2% more expensive components or the 5% less expensive components. And we can see that if we take a nice in-between value, then we get about 80% yield, which is quite good. What we didn't focus on here, because we're talking about component models, is all other aspects of the filter. Of course, this is an overly simplified example. But it would be fairly uh, easy to include, for example, the height of your dielectric or tolerances of your etching on the PCB board. You would use an EM simulator for that probably, uh, or the component models, but of course that's not the focus now. So this is what we accomplish now. If we use the 2% Cs, the more expensive uh, capacitances and the less expensive uh, inductances, we get a 93% yield. And as you can see, there are very few lines that cross this bar, and the bar basically meant that the, the component wasn't passing here. And we can even get 99% if we use 2% Cs and 2% Ls. Remember, when I used these more expensive components in the beginning, we had 100%, but at that point, we didn't include the tolerances in the PCB, and here they are included. So to summarize, there are good component uh, models available on the market, but if you want to be able to optimize and to do yield analysis in an easy way, the Modelytics model libraries are far superior. And this yield analysis is not only for you to see what the yield will be, it will also help you to get a much better yield from your design. So you will be able to use the powerful capabilities in the simulation software and use that to improve your design. So, and all these things are obviously not possible with S parameters. Yield analysis cannot be done. Uh, that was the presentation, so thank you for your time. And I think we have 12 seconds for any questions, in case there are any. 
Okay, thank you, Dan.